how are we going to feed the people that we need to feed in, in 20 years, and 50 years, and 100 years, and in 200 years. We've got to double our production in the next 10 to 15 years. Well, the only way we're going to do that is with healthy soils. We will not do that by doing things the way we do them today. For the long run, educating my neighbors, I think if they can implement this style of farming on their land, that's going to mean less soil in our local lake. It could be more money in their pocket through increased yields and just better stewardship for the soil. We're going to be able to operate in a system that allows us to have a good economic return and we're going to be able to do that not just over three years or five years or ten years but over a lifetime. It's all about demonstration and outreach. We're going to collect soil health measurement information on the farm. We're looking to really quantify how those different conservation best management practices help in terms of improved productivity, profitability, and environmental performance. And then bring that information that we've collected out to the farmers themselves. What we have found is uh, soil health is, is extremely important in mitigating risk as it relates to moisture conservation. We're doing this through conversations. We talk with each individual farmer. We've been farming for, uh, you know, I guess, including my father, probably over 50 years. Ask them, what is the next step in your farming operation? I've been in a 30-year no-till, strip-till system. Two years ago, I added cover crops to my rotation. Probably recently here, we're using the uh, variable rate planning, variable rate nitrogen. These farmers are innovators, early adopters. By creating yield zones, we know where the high-yielding portions of the farms are. Set up demonstration farm networks. As a group, we each pick off maybe one of those topics and then put the plots in, follow through, have a summer field day where the farmers can come and, and view what each one of us have done. I will be hosting several field days and I hope to educate my, my friends and neighbors what, what is working on my farm and what could work on their farm. It may take a single grower five years to, to understand two or three different systems and, and then be able to pick from what might work best for them. But if you've got three or five or ten different peers working on different solutions, then comparing those and, and, and be able to work together uh, certainly speeds that, that process up. This partnership is actually going to take it to the economic side of it. What does it cost to put the practice in and, 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 and what is the end result? We can produce more on the acre we have. The best thing that the Soil Health Partnership is going to be able to do is, is to network. Uh, it's going to be able to network producers, it's going to be able to connect farmers to each other and, and connect different cropping systems and different management practices to each other. The most important thing will be to be able to tell a story and, and, and tell how things are working for, for particular producers, what are the successes and what are the failures, and, and how can we learn from those and how can we improve upon those and, and adapt those to our own farming situations. Don't give up after just one year. You've got to reach out to the people that have done it. Whether it's conservation or soil health, we're, we're given this ground to use and we want to leave it in the same way that we took it over. We want our children to, to be able to produce on it. You know, we've got to take care of it so that it can produce for years to come.